pencil. Where's the pencil? Many people have heard of a camera obscura and a pinhole camera, but have you ever heard of a camera lucida? I'm going to show you how to make and use one today, but first let me explain what it's for and how it works. It's a device that can be used to help you draw using reflections. The artist looks down at their drawing surface through a small mirror and a piece of glass that's angled at 45 degrees. Take for example a still life. Let's say it's a bowl of fruit. You will see the image of the fruit on the paper because its reflection in the mirror is bounced onto your piece of glass. The glass is above your paper, so when looking through a hole in the top of the box, you can copy what you see on the glass onto your paper. There's an old theatre trick called Pepper's Ghost that uses the same idea. A figure stands in a well-lit area in front of the stage but out of the audience's view. A large piece of glass is placed between the stage and the audience, and the ghostly reflection of the well-lit figure is seen as if it is on the stage. The actors can appear to walk through it. The audience don't know they're looking at a well-concealed piece of glass, and mistakenly think the reflection is a person on the stage. The light on the hidden figure fades, and the ghost disappears like magic. Ever been to the Haunted Mansion at Disneyland? Exactly the same thing. It isn't a perfect method, you won't become Da Vinci overnight, I'm afraid. The reflected image becomes washed out on white paper, so you're better off using toned or grey paper. It won't be a perfect sharp image, but it can be a useful tool for mapping out and getting your perspective and proportions correct. So let's make one together. All you need is a small mirror, a small piece of glass and some black card. <coughs> So I have everything I need now to make my camera lucida. I have some black card that I cut into 10 centimetre squares. I've got a mirror that's 10 centimetres by 10. And I've got a piece of glass. Now this piece of glass, as you can see, is not square. I'm holding the corners there so you can see that it isn't square because this is one that's going to go diagonally in the box. So it needs to be longer than it is wide so that it will sit diagonally in the box. Okay, uh, now I've got everything I need to put my box together. So I'm going to start by cutting these, cutting two of these in half diagonally so that they can support the piece of glass a little better. Right, so on my cutting board, I've cut two of my squares into triangles diagonally. And I'm going to glue them to one of the other squares. Okay, so that I can hold my piece of glass down the middle. sit still and hold this until it dries so um, talk amongst yourselves so you can see now I have one side of my box and my diagonal window so we're going to do the same for the other side of the box now So that's two sides of my box, once it dries. Got a TIE fighter now. Okay. So now I need to put my glass side on. Right, I'm going to need to clean this mirror again. I did just clean it. 
because for this to work you do have to have very clean surfaces so I'll have to clean the glass and the mirror again before we start. Now I'm going to stick my diagonal piece over the top of the mirror there. Now before I'm going to stick that top piece on, I need to make a hole in it because of course this is the bit that I'm going to look down through. So there needs to be a little hole in this space. Where's my pencil gone? I had a pencil. Where's the pencil? draw yourself across in the middle of your last piece of card. Remember back to your uh, high school maths lessons. Obviously you found the middle. So now I can cut my hole. Lovely. I can see you all. Right. So now glue gun glue is hot. Be careful. Public service announcement. Right, so now I have gaffer tape. And I'm just going to cover all my corners with it just to make sure that it's absolutely secure first of all and that there's no light coming in where I don't want any light going in. Right, so I have my four sided box, I have a hole in the top and in the front we have a piece of glass at a 45 degree angle, I have a mirror at the back. All right, so now we need to do a test. That's immensely cool. I can indeed see you lot on here so I could draw, I can now draw what I see in front of me down here because it's reflecting from there and straight downwards. It's not immensely clear, as I said in my introduction. It's more of an aid. Uh, it wouldn't be you wouldn't be able to do a fantastic drawing based solely on what you see here. But what it does enable you to do is to map things out. So I can see my gaffer tape. I can see a wire from my glue gun going across. I can see my camera. I could map out the legs of my tripod and where everything is but in terms of looking at uh, shading and detail it's not there so the main purpose of this little device is to help you with working out perspective with working out um, dimensions of things uh, it's a little a little visual aid it's quite a funky little thing we are going to try and do a drawing with it which is going to be an interesting uh, little game. Let's see what I can come up with. I'm going to go and get the bowl of fruit from the kitchen, put it in front of me and try and draw it. Right, bowl of fruit, small dog. What do you want? Want an apple? Yes. Yeah. Take an apples, Mummy. Yeah. I know. <laughs> now, as I said in the introduction as well, if you try and work on a white surface, then you don't see as well. So I've got myself some grey paper. I know. I know. I'll have one in a minute and then you can have the middle. I promise. If I look through. I 
can indeed see a bowl of fruit. Now it's a little bit close, unfortunately. It's a bit close to me for it to be able to reflect back. So I'm going to move it out of the shot. So sorry guys, you don't get to look at my bowl of fruit. Yeah, ha <laughs> ha, you see, now I can see it. There we go, right. I can now map out. Right. Cool. <laughs> so, it's not very big. It's only centimeters high. Um, if you move things further away closer to you're going to get a change in focus as well as a change in size. So as a little tool for mapping stuff out and getting started that's not quite tracing so it's not really cheating, I think it's a great idea. So give it a go. Cool. Excellent. As always, use the comments section below to ask me questions about any of this and join our Facebook group, Artie Mouse Art Tutorials, to show your work, get some personal tutorial time with me. Sign up at the link below to get extra tips each week, take a look at the Artie Mouse 76 Instagram account to get film previews and of course, give me a little vote of confidence by subscribing to this channel so that I know that you're out there. See you soon!